I guess this is GKCS. We are talking about the Josephus problem, which is a very famous problem. And what it has is n people standing in a circle with the first person, the person at index 0, holding a sword. So what ends up happening in this game is that everyone dies apart from one person and that person is considered the winner. So here are the rules of the game. Firstly, you have a number k given to you. So in our case, let's take k equal to 2. And these, the, these are the number of people that you need to skip before you kill someone. Okay, uh, so let's just run through the game to understand what's happening. The sword initially is being held by the first person, index 0. So 1, 2, k is equal to 2. So 1, 2, we are going to kill the person standing at 1. So 1 is out of the game. And now the sword passes from 0 to the next alive person after 1. So that is 2. The sword is here. Okay. Now 2 does the same thing. 2 says I need to skip 2 people before I stab somebody. So that's 1 and 2. So this is of course not sk literally skipping 2 people. It's just the number which uh, represents the number of people you need to uh, you know, count before you kill someone. So 2 says 1, 2 and kills 3. 3 is now dead and the sword passes from 2 to 4. 2 does the exact same thing again. 1, 2, 5 is now dead, with the sword passing to 0. Now 0 sees that 1 cannot be counted in this game because 1 is dead. So 1 and 2, person at index 2 is murdered by 0, passing the sword to the person at index 4. Okay, 4 of course says that 1, 2 and kills 0. Now nobody is left in the game. The sword is still with 4, and 4 is considered the winner of the game. Alright, so the reason 4 is the winner of the game is because there's nobody left. But what you see here is that if there's just one person left in this game, then that person by default is the winner. Okay, so that's one important thing to notice. Uh, the second thing is that what we are interested in is finding the place that you need to stand to win the game. So initially, if, if this was a life or death situation and uh, someone asked you to choose a position over here, of course you would choose 4. You would try to think and understand where to stand in this circle to survive. So that's the game. You need to find out the index of the place where the last person will survive. So, if you have a look at this game, there's just two parameters in this game which are important. One is the output. So that is where the sword pointer will be in the end. So that can be defined by a function called w, which is winning, the winner, uh, containing a few parameters. So this is going to be our function, which is going to take a few parameters. All right, this is going to represent the game state. What could those parameters be? One thing that you, of course, need to take into consideration is the number of people in this game. Right? The answer will change if you add two or three more people now. So if, if the n is equal to 7 or n is equal to 8, that answer changes. In our case, n, which is the size of the circle, is 6. And k, of course, is 2. So, one of the parameters which needs to be passed is n, size of the circle. The next thing, of course, is the number of people that you'll be skipping. If you change this to 3, the answer will change. So, k is another parameter which you need to pass in. And now that we know how to represent our game using these numbers using these two parameters, let's try and think of a recursive solution for this problem. To find the last person alive in this game, a recursive solution is quite intuitive. The reason being that at the base case, you have one person alive and that person is not going to kill themselves, so they are the winner. So the last person to hold the sword wins. What you're looking at is the transition of the sword pointers. You just want to know who is the last person holding the sword while knowing that the first person to hold the sword is at index zero. Also, if you have a look at one state of the game where there are n people over here, then the next state of the game is going to have n-1 people with someone else holding the sword. But we know who's going to sword, hold the sword in the next uh, state. The reason being that this is well defined. You have to skip k people when you, when you kill one person. What we can then say is that the winner with n people and k people being skipped 
can be helped by getting the winner of n minus one people, the other state, uh, the smaller state. K is not going to change for one game, uh, and then this winner with the sword pointer being changed by k. So that is plus k. Also, something else has to be taken into consideration. This is a circle. So every time you move all the way around the circle, you actually have to take the module or take the remainder of the index that you are at. So if you are at index 1 and your circle is of size 3, that means that there's 0, 1, and 2. So that's your circle. If k is equal to 2 here, then you'll be jumping 2. But you are not going to go to index 3 because it doesn't exist. You're going to go to index 0. What you need to do is 1 plus 2 modulo size of circle, which is 3, which is going to give you 0. But this is the remainder operation. So that gives us modulo n is the solution we are looking for. All right, this is the recursive equation that we have. With the base case being this case, where you have one person remaining, it doesn't matter what k is. The answer in this case, the person who is going to live is the person at index 0. So these are the two cases that we have. This is the general case, this is the base case. We have a recursive solution with us and let's try to find out if it's correct. Let's just run it over an example. Alright, I'll just run this for n equal to 7 and k equal to 3. Okay, so what we see is that that means our function to find the winner for 7 comma 3 will decompose to the winner for 6 comma 3 plus 3 given here. So k is 3, that's why we are getting plus 3 here, n has been decremented by 1 and we are going to modulo it n. So modulo 7. This will be a solution for this answer. Recursively, of course, you can break this down to even smaller bits. So that is going to be w of 5 comma 3. Luckily, k doesn't change, so this part is simple. Modulo n has changed. So this is going to be in modulo 6. And this term has been basically been replaced by this term. And now you need to add plus 3 here to this term, modulo 7. So this is what we are getting. And every time that you do this, what's, what's essentially happening is that you'll be getting plus 3 modulo 5, and then plus 3 modulo 4, and so on and so forth. So as you keep going inside, you're going to get at the end w of 1 comma 3 plus 3 modulo 2 plus 3 modulo 3 and so on and so forth. So I'll just replace this this term with the base condition stating that w of 1 comma any k is equal to 0 because that's the last person standing and they are going to win the game. So this is going to be replaced by 0 so that's going to get cancelled plus 3 so 3 modulo 2 so 3 modulo 2 is 1. So that gives us 1. Now you come outside and you see that you get a plus 3 modulo 3 plus 3 modulo 4 so on and so forth. So plus 3 modulo 3 doesn't make any sense. 1 plus 3 modulo 3 is just 1. Right? Anything uh, the number and then the remainder with that is not going to affect. So 1 plus 3 modulo 4 comes after that. So what happens then is this becomes 4 modulo 4 giving us 0 but there's also 5, 6 and 7, seven remaining so you get, a, you get 0 plus 3 modulo 5 which gives you 3 plus 3 modulo 6 which gives us 0 okay we are near the solution now so that is 0 plus 3 modulo 7 which gives us 3 as the last standing index. So if we run this algorithm like we will uh, on the circle then
then we should get three over here. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. There's seven people standing with zero having the sword pointer and k is equal to three. So the first person to die will be zero, one, two. So k is equal to three and two dies. Passing the sword to the person at index three. One, two, three kills five. Passes the sword to six from three. We now have one, two, three. Okay. Uh, so one is killed. Passing the sword to three again. From six, one, two, three. Six is now dead. But the sword to zero. So zero which becomes one, two, and three. Four is now dead. Oh, four is dead. So in fact, the sword is passed back to zero. So there's no exchange of swords here. Uh, now zero, again one, two, three, kills zero. And finally the sword is passed to three. And three is the last person standing. So yes, the solution does work. Uh, and the order complexity of this is going to be from every point, every state, whatever size of the circle we have n is being decrepited by one. K is not changing, so K has no effect in the number of states that it creates. N is the only uh, factor which is affecting the number of states you're creating, and it's going all the way to one. So there's going to be a linked list of states, so to speak. From N, you are going to go to one, and the number of states you're creating are N. So this is an order N time complexity algorithm. All right, so that's it. A pretty simple solution, actually. A pretty elegant solution, also. If you have any doubts or suggestions on this problem, you can leave them in the comments below. Geeks for Geeks also has a reference. the The website has a reference for the Josephus problem, so you can have a look at that. Uh, so until next time, then see you.